dystopian times. Arctic scientists say we may have already passed climate tipping point. Now, the implications of this are very, very vast, but let's just go through here for a minute and, and read what this has to say. Um, after the largest expedition ever to the North Pole, researchers say Arctic ice is receding faster than ever before and that we may have already passed the point of no return on global heating. The expedition's leader, Marcus Rex, presented the team's findings on Tuesday, and he says, there are several tipping points in the climate system which lead to irreversible sudden changes which are triggered when the planet reaches a certain temperature. We have seen that we are on the verge of that tipping point which will lead to the disappearance of the ice in the Arctic summer. Now, if that wasn't horrifying enough, a, a couple of years ago, we got the report from the IPCC, which says we had about 12 years to act if we wanted to stop catastrophic levels of climate change. A couple of years have already passed, and um, now, wrong video, um, now, leaked IPCC draft climate report reads like a 4,000 page indictment of humanity's failure. This is a warning of existential risk of survival of collapse, said Extinction Rebellion. Now, for more on this, Andrea Germano, staff writer of Common Dreams, explains Agents France Press reported Monday on the contents of a leaked draft of a United Nations Intergovernmental Climate Panel report, which warned that devastating effects of warming of a warming world are set to hit far sooner than previously thought, with impacts including an additional tens of millions of people facing hunger by 2050. We're all going to be alive by then. We're all going to see the shit show. Um, now, we're not going to get too deep into this, but I do want to get the reaction uh, from the panel here because this is uh, obviously worrying. And I mean, this show is called Dystopian Time. So we're uh, we're starting out diving headfirst into the uh, pile of shit. So Dylan, as a young man who in your golden years where you know you in theory should be retiring, you know, you're going to be seeing climate apocalypse. Do you have any optimism left in you or do you feel as if we are headed straight off a cliff as a species? Well, as a young lad, obviously it, it concerns me. I can't be one of the people who like, well, I'm 92 years old. I lived through uh, the, these wonderful car manufacturing industries and, and having a wonderful union on my back. I'm not going to be able to live through that reality. I got to live through uh, the reality I'm in, which uh, shows like, me never being able to own a home, maybe, and apartments. And we, we all know the current uh, dystopia we live in. Name of the podcast. Wonderful. Yeah, but, nice um, Yeah, wonderful. You know, see, I know how to host. But <laughs> the thing is, it's, it's really, uh, when you look at it, like, I can't, whether or not it's going to happen or not, I'd rather go down fighting, you know? I'd rather have that be humanity's story. Let's say we're, we're fucked. Let's just assume right now that we're fucked anyway, right? It would have been it'd be a shit movie if we ended it just be like, eh, right? If we have even the sliver of a chance, we should still struggle for it. Because even the thing is, this person, as said in the article, there's multiple tipping points. So it's like we passed the first tipping point. Oh God, that's terrible. The solution isn't, well, okay, let's jump off all the tipping points. It's like breaking one leg. It's like, well, let's bring all three of our other limbs and like gut ourselves publicly in the times in the square. So I would say that whether or not we've passed the tipping point, um, even though, of course, I hope we haven't, we should, of course, do everything we can to avoid crossing the other tipping points. Sadly, there's multiple economic and, and geopolitical advantages to multiple nations and, and politicians to not do it. The Russians, of course, want us to continue to be reliant on oil and natural gas because that props up the entirety of the economy that is uh, kept in a backwater. The United States has uh, two parties which still take large amounts of donations from oil and gas companies which want to continue their reign in the United States and multiple politicians who still deny climate change. Our last president of the United States, the most powerful person on the planet, denied climate change was even real. And then uh, the Chinese uh, economy and the Chinese uh, nation still has a lot of growing to do in their eyes. And the, by the time they would go off of coal in their projections, it would be like 2050, uh, which we would still go past multiple more tipping points. So every major geopolitical force has multiple incentives to literally do nothing because they can't see 20, 30, 40 years down the line. Uh, the, the biggest, the, Sadly, the biggest motivation I see in the United States right now for us to actually address climate change is that we're seeing more reports every day on how this could actually affect our military effectiveness. And um, it's sad that it could take that to actually make us act. Yeah. Yeah. 
and um, whatever makes us act um, is good. But I, I like the thing that you said about basically, you know, if we're going to go down, we should go down fighting. Um, on that note, Denims, what do you think ultimately um, is going to happen? Like, do you believe that we're going to see a Green New Deal within the next 10 years? Um, give us your thoughts on this situation, because I feel like I've kind of embraced the black pill or I've taken the black pill and I am a bit of a doomer. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? If you can give me some optimism, that would be much appreciated. So I really want to believe that we can push for policies that eventually, you know, maybe <laughs> remove us from the hellscape that we are currently barreling towards. Um, and I know you prepared another segment with uh, uh, Dave Rubin uh, and Michael Knowles, and that's truly like the epitome of like intelligence online. It it really sent me to watch. And I, I think we'll do it despite all of the rhydoid misinformation. Like the right wingers see articles like this and then immediately they think like, oh, this is like the 10th time they've said it's it's gonna be over for us. And they don't really understand what these reports actually mean and how there are like maybe multiple tipping points that like cause like irreversible damage. And after that point, you can't go any further. Um, and so it's frustrating that that exists, but I, I'm, I'm really like happy with the amount of leftists online that are making videos, making content, and like maybe pushing people away from these ideas. And the more people we push away from these ideas, the more people we get in favor of dem voting Democrat, voting people who actually support things like the Green New Deal. So I have my fingers crossed. I'm gonna believe because I'd rather believe than not believe. Hey, I'll take it, a little bit of copium. No, and um, you know, that's a great point. I will say that the urgency, like how bad the, si the situation is and how we need to address it yesterday, I do feel as if there has been a bit of a paradigm shift. And really, I, I started to not notice this with the IPCC report. Um, Shark, what are your thoughts on this situation? Do you actually think that um, it's there's going to be this time where eventually we just elect enough millennials and progressives and they take action? Or is there going to be some sort of, you know, um, worldwide uh, groundswell, um, kind of like we saw over the last couple of years with the uh, kids climate march, the school walkouts. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? What do you think it's going to take in order to have any movement on this issue? I think one of the really big things that it'll take is um, people seeing it in their personal lives. So when you can't walk outside in the summertime without like shoes on because the concrete is literally melting you when you can't grow anything really and you like miss a day of watering and all and like the little because like a lot of millennials they love their plants i personally love plants i have a whole rack of plants like house plants over here i show it on stream sometimes i i love i love growing things um when when those people when you plant like your little garden and it just like completely just like raises over like you're living out in the middle of nowhere like courage um, I, I really feel like those sorts of things that in, start to impact people's lives a little bit more um, are going to start to push them that way. And I mean, we've been seeing it where every single year is the hottest year ever. I think you're really starting to get people to be like, hey, you know, we really got a problem here. And like like Dylan said, I mean, just because we passed the first tipping point, if we have. Um, doesn't mean that it's over. There's lots of problems and who knows, maybe like sometime in the next like 100, 200 years or something, maybe if we like really uh, get our act together, your kids or your grandkids will start to see like us maybe pulling back from from some of that and the CO2 um, uh, leaving a little bit or more more solutions getting um, being brought up because science changes every single year and we're, we're moving a lot faster. Um, I don't like to take the black pill on like literally anything. I really feel like there have been hundreds of generations all throughout human history that thought that this was going to be the end. Um, and I feel like we're no different. Um, but, you know, our our problems are now really a lot bigger than your local town um, getting raided. But for those sorts of people, um, you getting on the you getting on like the Lord's bad side and them just like slaughtering your entire town. I mean, that, that was a reality. Right. Um, I feel like humans are um, incredibly resilient. And um, I like to look at it in, in the sense of um, we're, as climate is getting worse, um, more people are talking about it. Um, and I think, um, and you know, we can talk about capitalism and everything. And I, I do, do believe that we won't really see like a real, real fix to this. We always want to like slip back into the easiest, like lowest common denominator, as long as we still have like capitalism around. But if we have to work in the system that we do, um, I, I really think that um, we, we're moving in a in a good direction. Now, whether it's fast enough, we can debate on that. Um, but I, I don't really 
like the idea of giving up. And um, I, I really think that um, we, we can make a turnaround as long as we um, uh, make sure that we stay on it.